distractions, distractions. Mm -hmm. This one was a difficult one for me to do, but I'm going to show you what I've done to stop myself from distracting. Just to give you a disclaimer, I was that person that would literally get distracted every 15, 20 minutes. I could not focus on doing work for more than an hour. I struggled, like I would take my phone and I would be doing some messaging or playing games, doing something, would then go downstairs and get something to eat or you know, look out the window because I heard some noise. That was me, I was that person. I would not be able to stay for more than 30 minutes. And the problem with distraction is once I got distracted by whatever I was doing, when I'm trying to come back, it was as if I had to redo what I did, which meant that I wasted time because I lost my chain of thoughts of what I was doing before. Because I got distracted so many times, I wasn't able to put quality deep work, which meant that instead of revising maybe for an hour or two hours, I ended up doing three, four hours at the beginning. And that was just such a waste of time because I was not efficient in how I was doing things and I was just kind of literally like a wave going like this left and right. Now I'm going to share to you the method that I learned and I'm still doing to this day that has helped me to focus for more than two, three, four hours and literally get in some quality deep work. If you're the type of person that does not get distracted and is able to work for long periods of time and do well, listen, this video is not for you. You've literally aced it. You don't need to watch this video. You're doing well. So these are for the people that get distracted and need help on how to reduce distraction to get quality deep work in. The first thing I would say when you're revising, when you're doing work is you need to turn your phone off. You need to mute your notifications. You see, for me, when I was trying to work, my phone was literally next to me. That meant that as I'm working, if I get some sort of message or notification, I can see it and that's a distraction. Distraction. And that means I would take my phone and think, okay, it's only three seconds. I'll just reply or I just check this notification. Three seconds literally becomes four minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, because then I'm already on that network, on the social network and checking other things. So what you want to do is try and move your phone away from where you are. Now, what I did, I was a bit extreme. I literally took my phone and put it in another room. I did not have my phone in my room. And the reason being is so that if the phone is in another room, I'm not gonna be bothered to get up and see my phone. By having my phone in another room, I'm not gonna be bothered to go and check it because literally I'm revising, I'm working, I just can't be bothered to get up. Having the phone in another room just means that you're not gonna see any notifications, you're not gonna hear anything, and you're just gonna be completely focused on what you're doing. That's a very, very important step. And if you can do that, try it out for one day and see for yourself how that works. Because for me, it worked wonders. Once I finish my work, then I'll go check my phone for any notifications or anything that requires my attention but other than that my phone is not next to me i literally do this till this day like when i'm working or recording these videos for you guys my phone is not here my phone is in my room it's not here because it's a distraction. It just means that I can literally focus on giving you quality content for you guys. So I would say try and do that. Like if you can't be that extreme, start with one hour. Take one hour, right? For one hour, put your phone in another room and see how that goes. Start small, always start small. Don't go the way I did. I went extreme, but that was after steps by step by step that I did that got me to that level. So what you guys wanna do if you can't do it that extreme, start with one hour. When you're revising your history, biology, whatever subjects that you're revising, put that phone away in another room and just do it for one hour and see how you feel. And once you feel like, oh my gosh, this actually works, I'm actually able to put the work in, increase that one hour to one and a half hours and then increase it by another half an hour, so to two hours. And as you're increasing your tolerance, what happens is your capacity to do more deep work starts increasing and your phone doesn't become a distraction anymore. Another important reason why I would say to move your phone in another room is because of this. You probably have gone through this because I definitely did this. I was doing this all the time. When you're revising, right, when you're doing something and you find something that's hard or something that you're not able to answer, what would you do? See, this is what I did. I'll take my phone. The moment I find something hard or I can't actually think or find an answer, I'll do that, oh gosh, I can't think. I'll just take my phone and do something because it's so easy. It's like, oh, it's only three seconds, I'm gonna do it. It kind of takes away that pressure that you're trying to figure out the answer or trying to understand by using your phone. Do you do that? Put it down in the comments if you do that. Like when you're finding something difficult or you're not able to answer a question, instead of trying to figure out the question, you just take your phone and go on it and do something with it. I literally was a victim of that. I was doing that all the time. So not having your phone there basically means you have to try and figure out the problem that you're trying to solve. It will get your brain to think more. Now, some people or some of your friends will come and tell you, look, I've been working for 12, 14 hours. And to me, it's like, man, shut up, man. What do you mean you've been working 12, 14 hours? How much of that exact 12, 14 hours have you actually done quality deep work? I guarantee you probably most of it is they've done three, four hours. The rest was just probably doing other things, scrolling on the phone, doing other things, checking emails, being on social media, being on the laptop. I guarantee you that. 14, working for four, 12, 14 hours is not healthy. You need to sleep. 
sleep is so important. That's something I've learned myself. I had to go through that period of when I wasn't getting that much sleep and literally my brain was going absolutely like, oh, it was bad. It is not good. I do not recommend to do that. So when people say that oh, I've worked for 12, 14 hours, they say it for certain reasons. The reasons are to make them feel better. The other reason is so that they can tell their friends. So it's like a you know social status, like, hey, look, I worked 12, 14 hours. Man, shut up, man. Yeah, well, 12, 14 hours doing what? Show me the work. Show me exactly how much you've done in 12, 14 hours. Literally, that's a lot. 12, 14 hours is a whole day. Your brain is not going to be able to concentrate for that long. So what I would say to you guys is focus on actually putting quality work. You can do that 12, 14 hours worth of work that they say in three, four hours and you still get your quality sleep in. It's so much better to get quality work in three, four hours and still get a good enough sleep so that you still feel refreshed for the next day. Because I did those 12, 14 hours and that was just for me to brag to myself like, look, I've done 12, 14 hours. But really I should have asked myself how much of that 12, 14 hours was quality work. That's the mistake I did. Put the quality work in. Don't be putting 12, 14 hours. It's gonna be more detrimental than you know and it's not going to do you any favors. Another distraction is your friends. You've got to tell your friends, listen, in this period of time, I am not available. So please don't call me, don't message me because I'm, unless it's an emergency, I need to work. And if your friends are real friends, they'll understand. They'll really understand because at the end of the day, this is your life. Your friends can wait, right? After the GCSEs, after the A-levels, after the university exams or whatever exams you're doing, you can still go back and talk with them because they're probably going through the same thing as you guys are, right? They're also going through the exams. So why waste time? You know, once the exams are finished, you guys are going to hang out. You guys are going to, you know, go out and do whatever you need to do. Your friends will understand. If they're your true friends, they'll understand. And really, to be fair, they should be doing what you're doing as well. So if they're not, you should tell them off. It's like, listen, why, why are we going out right now? We should be working. Motivate each other right? Motivate the other person as well. Because once you do that, they'll feel like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm slacking here. I need to up my game as well. That's what you should be to your friend if they're not doing that. That's what, that's the definition of a good friend. If your friend is not doing that and calling you and not doing the work, you need to let them know. Like, listen, look, I'm putting the work in. I need to focus on myself. You need to do the same because this is also your future. You need to motivate them as well. So if they're not doing that, put them in their place and let them know. And if they're your true friend, they'll understand. If they're your friends that, like, oh, no, no, I'm here to just party or go out or just have fun, man, really, do you want to have friends like that? Do you really want to have friends like that? Or do you want friends that will push each other to go to the next level? That's the kind of friends you want. So with friends, you can cut that off as well. Talk to them, communicate with them. Obviously, don't be rude and harsh and say, like, I'm not going to talk to you, but let them know the situation. The other thing I would say in terms of distraction is family. If you're in a household where it's quite loud, maybe go to another place, a quieter place. Library could work. For me, it didn't really work because there's a lot of people, but maybe for you guys, it might help. Put the music on, put your head headphones on. That could work for you guys. Or try and find a time when, you know, at home it's quiet. Because obviously during the Easter holidays, probably your parents are going to be working. Your other siblings will probably be going to school. So you'll probably have the whole day to yourself where it's free. So you can use that day to revise and have literally quiet and peace and just do your revision in as well. So when it comes to that, you know, try and find the best time when you can work. And if obviously your household is always busy and loud, maybe try and work somewhere else. Now, if you are comfortable working in the noise and you can actually get quality work in, then that's fair enough, you can do it. But really, I think that's gonna be a bit difficult. I, I don't think, yeah, it's, I don't think that's gonna work. Uh, if you have noise coming in all the time, you're not gonna be able to think properly. For you to be able to think deeply, you need to have silence. You need to be able to focus on what you're doing without any noises coming from left and right. The other one is food. I'll get hungry every half an hour and I'll feel like, oh, let me go and get food. And when you eat, you feel good about yourself, right? Cause it's like, oh, it feels nice. What you wanna do with food is you wanna eat something at breakfast that is quite heavy. So it'll keep you full for the rest of the day or maybe even up till lunchtime or 1 p.m. so that you don't have to go and snack. Cut the snacks off, you don't need snacks. Get a bottle of water, get a smoothie or something that will you have with you when you're studying so you can just sip on as you're working. You don't wanna be kind of leaving your place and going to get some food or et cetera or anything like that because it's just, it just kind of derails you from the work that you're doing and it kind of like means that you have to go, come back, sit down. <sighs> It's long, man. It's long and you don't want that. When you're in the deep work, you just want to be in the deep work. So anything that you want, like maybe biscuits or something, just put it there. Like bring it with you next to you as you're working so that you don't have to keep going to the kitchen and back. So these are the things that I did to avoid these distractions. And trust me, these things are game changers. They helped me so much. And like I said, I'm still doing this till this day. So you can imagine if I did this when I was in GCSE A levels and I'm doing it now when I'm running these different businesses and working as well, it shows to you that it's working. So hopefully you guys have taken something from this video and listen, leave a comment, anything that you guys want me to go through, anything that you want me to help you on, just put it down in the comments. Like I said, I'm more than happy to help you guys out. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.